Welcome to Wyoming. We are thrilled that you joined SNS Outfitter and Guides for this hunt. As you make your way through the orientation process, we wanted to offer you a streamlined safety talk. We couldn't think of a better presenter than our own Benny Tillerson. Benny first hunted with SNS in 1984, guided by our owner and outfitter, Cy Gilliland. He was hooked ever since. In 1989, he got his guiding license and has worked his way up through the ranks. He is now our Town Hunt Camp Manager, greeting all of you guests each season and befriending most. So without further ado, I give you Mr. Tillerson. Hello, everybody. Welcome to SNS Outfitters Town Hunt. It's a pleasure to have you here. And for you guys who've been with us before, it's great to see you. And for you guys who just, this is your first time, welcome to SNS Outfitters. We want you to love us. I got a, need a few minutes of your time to go over our rules and regulations and make sure everybody's on the same page. Over the next few days, we're gonna make sure that you have a great, successful, and fun hunt. But the biggest thing, we want you to be safe. If we're not safe and we hurt somebody, that takes the fun out of it. We want you to have a good time and we're gonna make sure you smile. If for some reason you have a problem during this hunt, be sure to talk to your guide about it. He will fix it. If he don't fix it, you'll bring it to me as the camp manager and whatever that problem is, we'll take care of it. We don't want you to ever go home unhappy about anything because unhappy folks don't come back and hunt with us again. And we want to see you next year. In the morning, we'll meet down here in this room at about 5.30 so we can make lunches and get everything ready. Bring all your gear with you. If you'd like to have breakfast here at the motel, you can eat at six o'clock and then we'll go to our separate ranches. But if not, we'll leave whenever you're ready. But we have on these tables over here, we have all sorts of sandwich meat, all sorts of goodies and cookies and crackers and potato chips. Make yourself a lunch. Have a bigger lunch you want to be because you're gonna be gone all day. Be sure you take enough food. Another thing, be sure you drink lots of fluids. This atmosphere here is so dry it dries you out and it'll make you look like me. So we don't want you to be wrinkled. So take, drink lots and lots of fluid because that is very important. The guide will have a cooler in his truck with drinks and Gatorade and water and source. So just be sure that you stay hydrated because it's very important. Got a couple things we need to talk about is meat processing. In the field, the, the guides will take care of field dressing your animal, getting them ready for a meat processor. We use a company called Pat's Meats. It's here in town that does an excellent, excellent job. We don't have any business hookup other than the fact that they do a good job. So you tell them how you want your meat cut, you tell them when you're leaving, and they'll have it all cut up, packaged, and ready for you to go. We want to talk about taxidermy. We have two taxidermists that we recommend. Again, no business hookup except they do an excellent, excellent job. Have a young lady over at Lander that named Kim Lutz that uh, comes over about twice a week, picks her heads up here at the meat processor. If you leave them to be mounted here, she does excellent work, has a good turnaround time. We have a young man named David Dandridge who is one of our guides who does super work. Their prices are about the same. We have both of their brochures here that you can look at if you want to think about leaving your heads here. I always recommend leaving the antelope heads in Wyoming because Back home, where I live in Alabama, they don't know what an antelope looks like. So if you come in with your horns on backwards, that's not good. So think about what you want to do. It's, it's fine if you want to take them home, they'll have them ready for you to go. We run a law abiding outfit. We have to report any game violations that we see by law. If it includes us or if it includes you, if there's a game violation, we have to report it to the Fish and Game. Our guides are pretty good at keeping everybody legal, but once in a while, little things slip through the crack because it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on. So here's a few of the things that happen occasionally with us. People forgetting to wear their fluorescent orange. From the time you get this down here in the morning until we bring you back tomorrow night, you have to wear the fluorescent orange. You can either wear the vest or the hat or both, whichever one you're comfortable with, but you have to wear it from the time you start in the morning until afternoon. If you've killed your animal and you're still traveling with your buddy, you have to wear the hunter arms. Improperly tagged animals. 
I know you think that's weird to think about too, but these tags have to be done in exactly the right way. Uh, the fishing game will, will allow us to kick it. So what you do when you kill your animal, give your license to your guide and he will separate the parts and he'll make sure that everything's done exactly right. This is a carcass coupon that you have that stays with the meat from the time we take it to the processor until you pick it up and take it home. We'll have another tag that we put on, put on the head to take you, make sure you, you've got the right animal. People forget their hunting license. When we go hunting in the morning, make sure your hunting license is in your pocket or on your body. If you put it in your backpack, your backpack has to be in the field with you. It can't be in the truck. If the game warden checks you and you don't have your hunting license on your body, he can give us a ticket. So be sure of that. You need, a, you need an ID other than your hunting license, like a driver's license or some sort of identification. Shooting the wrong species. This is kind of hard to do, but on these ranches we have horses and cows and domestic sheep, people, deer, elk, antelope. Let's be sure we're shooting the animal that we have a license for. Listen to your guide. He's going to make sure that you're still looking at the, at the right animal. He's going to make sure that he finds you the best he can find for you to shoot. But if you don't like the animal that you're looking at, for any reason, don't shoot that animal. This is not catch and relief. Once you pull the trigger, he's dead, and that's your animal. So if you're not happy with that antelope, just tell your guide, ah, it's not what I want, and we'll go find you another antelope. Or deer, whichever one we're shooting. Shooting too many animals. That's easy to happen with antelope, because they get in herds, there'll be sometimes 10 or 15 of them together. Make sure you listen to the guide. He's gonna tell you when your animal's clear. Make sure you're looking at the same one he's talking about. He'll tell you the antelope's looking to the right, he's got his head up, he's got his head down. Just listen real close so you know you're looking at the same animal that, that he's looking at, that you're looking at. Listen to your guide. These guys are professionals. They've been doing this for many, many years. They know what they're doing. So antelope and deer are very hard to judge, but antelope especially, because the difference in a really good antelope and a great antelope is just a little bit. So listen close to your guide. He's going to get you the best one and the biggest one that he can find for you. When we're traveling in our trucks, we, expect, we want you to ride with the muzzles down on the floor. If you don't want your rifle butt on the floor, either have a glove, uh, a sock, or a soft case to keep your muzzle from the floor. Because if it's sticking up in the air, it wanders around over the truck and it points at everybody in the truck sooner or later. So let's be careful where that gun's pointed all the time. Muzzle control, make sure where your gun's pointed all the time. When we're out walking, either carried in a port arm position, straight up or straight down. Do not point it at anyone or anybody or anything that you're not planning on shooting. Be careful with that rifle. When we get back to the truck, open your bolt, show the guy that your rifle is unloaded so he'll know that you're ready to go. No alcoholic beverages. From the time you start hunting in the morning till you're done the evening, no drinking. When we get back to town, we're all adults. If you want to have a drink, that's the time to do it. But no, no beverages until that time. Failure to adhere to the safety rules that we have just talked about could end your hunt and without a refund. So we don't ever want that to happen. So let's be careful. Be considerate of this truck you're riding in. This truck does not belong to s, &S Outfitters. It belongs to the guide who's driving it. Be sure that you don't have sharp objects in your pocket. Try to keep mud out of his truck. Take care of the man's truck. He'll tell you his rules about whether or not you can smoke, that each guide's different. When you open your truck doors, be sure you're holding tight to the truck door because the wind here blows constantly and it can tear the door right off the truck. So be careful with the man's truck. And another thing we want you to always remember, this is a real hunt. We're not in a high fence. So there's a slight possibility that you may not kill one or you may not get your animal. But you know, this is real hunting, so be, be thinking about that. And we always tell this because it's kind of amusing what I'm gonna say. One of you guys in this group will kill the biggest animal on this hunt. One of you guys in this group will kill the smallest animal on this hunt. 
But my little tiny antelope is just as important to me as your big one. So let's be, let's be nice to each other. I want you to have a good hunt. I want you to look around at this country. It's gorgeous here, and I know it's different from where you live. So just take in all the scenery and look at all these animals and have a good time and good luck. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for that safety talk. We wish each of you all the best of luck on this hunt. As the Director of Media and Marketing, I can't wait to hear the stories and see the photographs from your days in the field. Be sure that you tag SNS Outfitter on Instagram and Facebook as you share, and you may want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can follow along with all the action the rest of the hunting season. Thank you and best wishes.